Hello and welcome to day two of our virtual school. I'm so excited to see all of you again. Um, thank you if you watched yesterday. Uh, I saw lots of you on while I was watching and I know some of you went back later in the day, so that's great. Here we are for day two. Let's get started. Bible Lesson 2. Today we're going to continue our devotional series that's called Indescribable, a seven-day journey about God and science. Again, it's written by Louis Giglio. And before I read the devotional thought, I want to start off with our focus verse. Our focus verse for today is Colossians chapter 1, verse 17. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And our devotional thought for today is titled Holding It Together. Have you ever seen workers build a brick building? They don't just stack the bricks on top of each other. They need some sort of glue to hold all of those bricks together. The glue for bricks is called mortar. In the same way, your body is made up of 37.2 trillion little bricks called cells. And like a building, those cells need some sort of glue to hold them all together. The glue for cells is called laminin. Laminin holds your body together. The thing that's even more amazing about laminin is what it looks like. When you take a peek at laminin, which you would need a microscope to do, it looks like a cross. Why is that important? It's important because it's another reminder that we are God's own creation. You see, God left his fingerprints all throughout his creation. The Bible tells us that even though we can't see the invisible qualities of God, like his awesome power and his holiness, we can see his creation and know that he is real. Jesus was with God at creation, and in him all things were created, things in heaven and things on earth, visible and invisible. In him all things hold together. Laminin is a picture of what Jesus tells us in his word. He is the glue that holds our bodies, our souls, and everything together. So when you're feeling overwhelmed and having the absolute worst day ever, think about laminin and remember that Jesus holds you and all things together. Here's the prayer. Lord, when I start to worry about all the things happening in my life and around me, help me to stop and remember that you are Lord of all and that you hold everything together, including me. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for uh, allowing us to meet again today over with the use of technology. Um, I pray that you keep us all safe. I pray that we can be lights for you and show others your love. It's in your name we pray. Amen. All right. For math today, we're going to start off with extra math. I want you to look on the screen. You can find your um, username and PIN and just copy exactly that into um, the extra math login screen along with my email, which you can just copy and paste from the description below. All right, now that you've done extra math, and remember, I can look, uh, we're going to move on to practicing fractions. We're going to practice fractions using BrainPop Junior. So again, I want you to click the link below, uh, BrainPop Junior. When you get there, if you remember how to log in, you can go ahead and do that. If you need help logging in, I want you to come back, look at this screen, and find your username. And then everybody's password is A B C D one two three four. Once you get logged in, I want you to go to the notifications at the top, and then it'll be the top assignment where it talks about fractions. Alright, spelling. 
Today we're gonna start list 25. Don't worry, you're not having a test or pretest this week, but I, we're going to use Spelling City. If you don't remember your login for Spelling City, check right here and then go ahead, click the link below, head to Spelling City, and they're gonna do the assigned activity for lesson for list 25. All right, let's finish this virtual day up. We're gonna finish off this day with science. For science today, we're gonna to go to Mystery Science. We're gonna watch a video about what's the most dangerous animal in the world. But first, before you watch, I want you to comment below what you think the most dangerous animal in the world is. Hi, it's Doug. This summer, I was pet sitting for my daughter's class. This is their classroom pet. His name is Mr. Lizard. He's what's called a bearded dragon. Now, that name sounds really ferocious, and some people, when they first see him, they're a little startled. You can tell he's got these spikes on him and sharp claws. But bearded dragons aren't dangerous at all. In fact, Mr. Lizard likes to be pet. Someone named Kiwa has a question about dangerous animals. Let's give him a call now. Hi, Doug. Hi, Kiwa. I have a question for you. What is the most dangerous animal in the world? That's a great question. Before I say anything more, I'll give you some time to come up with your own ideas. What do you think is the most dangerous animal in the world? Now would be a good time to pause the video and discuss. Okay, you ready? Well, maybe you thought of animals like sharks or lions. They've got sharp teeth and they're hunters. Or maybe you thought of animals like snakes or scorpions. They've got venom in their fangs or their stingers. While these animals might be really scary, would you believe me if I told you they're actually not very dangerous? Here's the thing people have noticed. Very few people in the world actually get hurt by these animals each year. In fact, if we add up all the numbers of people hurt by animals like these, the animals we usually think of as being scary, it doesn't even come close to the number of people hurt by the most dangerous animal in the world. And that animal is the mosquito. Seriously. When I first learned that, I couldn't believe it. Really? Mosquitoes are the most dangerous animal in the world? I mean, come on, mosquitoes bite you and they make you itch. They might be annoying but dangerous? Here's the thing though. People who live in warm, swampy areas have always noticed that where there are a lot of mosquitoes, it seems like there are a lot of people who get sick. People in these areas would get certain diseases. Today, these diseases go by names like malaria and dengue fever. For most of history, no one could figure out why people were getting sick with these diseases. But about a hundred years ago, scientists discovered an important clue. These diseases would always start with a mosquito bite. What scientists eventually discovered was that some mosquitoes carry germs inside their bodies. When a mosquito sucks blood out, some of the mosquito's saliva or spit gets into a person's body. So germs that are inside the mosquito are able to get into someone's body. Even today, many people get sick from these diseases, so sick that they have to go to a hospital to get help from a doctor. In most parts of the world today, like where I live in the United States, these diseases aren't very common, but they are common in other parts of the world, especially in warm tropical places. It's in these warm tropical places that people have to be very careful. They often hang mosquito nets and spray themselves with mosquito repellent. Scientists are working on even better ways to keep people safe from mosquitoes. Hopefully, one day not long from now, mosquitoes won't be the most dangerous animal in the world anymore. So in summary, mosquitoes may not look very scary, but in some places they carry germs that can make people extremely sick, which makes mosquitoes the most dangerous animal in the world. 
more dangerous to people than sharks, lions, and snakes. That's all for this week's question. Thanks, Kiwa, for asking it. A mosquito? Were you as surprised as I was? That's not what I was expecting. But thank you, Doug, for the great video from Mystery Science. Day two of virtual school has already come to an end. Thank you again for joining me. I can't wait for tomorrow. Check back here at 9 o'clock uh, if you subscribe to our channel or check um, Class Dojo for the link. See you tomorrow. Have a great rest of your day.